This is the intro jingle. This is the K-Pop DevOps Show with Eric Nam. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the K-Pop Tebak Show. I'm your host, Eric Nom, and I'm so excited that you're joining us here today. We have a very special, special guest joining us. But before we tell you who it is, in case you haven't noticed from the actual description that you clicked on to watch the show, we got to do a couple things, right? Yeah. Why am I speaking like this? You're really good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I tried. So anyways, today we have Ashley B. Choi Che Kidna on the Tebak Show. How have you been? I've been great. Yeah? What have you been up to? Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just… Well, it was recently my birthday, so… Happy birthday. Thank you. So, what did you do for your birthday? Well, on my actual birthday, I didn't do much. I just had brunch. And then mm-hmm. I had some gipsar with my radio staff. and. Nice. Uh, peeps, and then I had the live show, and then I went home and slept early. That sounds enthralling. Mm-hmm. Did but then, you have a celebration? Well, like the weekend before, we had like a small gathering uh, uh-huh. with Joan because Joan's birthday is on the sixth, so oh we God. always celebrate our birthdays together, like every year. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of November babies. A lot. Yeah. Like my calendar this month is uh-huh. like full. And I actually know three people with the same birthday as me. Like Ooh. just around me. Well, my best friend in New York, her uh-huh. birthday is November 9th too. And then I had I actually interviewed Secret Number that day. And one of the members, Sudam, it was her birthday too. So we oh both gosh. celebrated our birthday together on air. Seven's birthday is on November 9th. Wow. I wouldn't know because I was a really big fangirl of him. But yeah. <laughs> you don't know how happy I was when I saw that his birthday was November 9th. Oh my god. 9. This is meant to be. We yeah. were supposed to I get married. I told all my friends. I was like, he's mine. Like, we're supposed to be together. Don't fangirl over him. <laughs> I'm the number one fan. But yeah. So. Um, well, now that we got that out of the way, I think that's very important information. Are you a Scorpio too? I is. Scorpios. Scorpios are all. Yeah. Okay. Um, my birthday is a Scorpio. Actually, Eddie is. Brian is as well, right? All my brothers, all of us are. Scorpio. My brother and I are Scorpio too. Yeah? When's yeah. your brother's birthday? My brother's 15. Oh. So like we're all right there. Yeah. Man. That's crazy. We're all Valentine's Day babies. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> I like. I was like, should I say it? And I was like, we said it. <laughs> it's true. Um, but okay. So let's talk about this. You were born in Korea. Mm-hmm. And you moved to Queens. Yes. When you were eight. Mm-hmm. And then how did you end up… Well, how was it growing up in Queens? Well, I moved when I was nine. Uh And then I started fourth grade in Queens. Well, Mm -hmm. first Fresh Meadows. And then I moved to Flushing. When I first moved, I was kind of bullied a lot. So I didn't have the best time. And I had really low self-esteem. Boo. Um, Even my teacher bullied me. Like my fourth grade teacher. I think I saw this on your podcast. Where you're like, did you want to speak English or something? Yeah. She didn't want to teach me English. What's her name? Let's call her out. I don't know. I don't remember. Miss blah blah blah. Yeah. Screw you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So… And then I went… I moved to PS107. What's that? It's just the name of the school. But I just oh. wanted to be specific because I love the school so much. Oh. And then I met like the best teacher there. And she taught me English in like six months. And oh. then from then on, I was I graduated ESL. And then I moved on to junior high school. And then that's when I started hanging out with all the Korean Korean people. Kind of, you know, the rebels. Uh-huh. And then so you're one of those ASEANs. Yeah, like KP you know, Korean Pride ASEAN. Yeah, K-Pride. Yeah, K- <laughs> Pride. Um I was for a little bit, but then yeah, and then yeah, I went to high school, started like dancing and singing and performing for fun yeah. and then went to college and had an opportunity to audition for Cube. So I tried out and then I got in and then I moved to Korea. I moved back to Korea in 2011. Okay. How was it moving back here? Everything changed so much. Yeah. So I was very confused at first. I went back to like my house that I grew up in and mm. that neighborhood. And I went back to my grandma's house after 11 years. And I was so shocked because everything was so much smaller than right? I… Yeah. I so much smaller mean. than I remembered. And I realized like… Wow. Like our house was really tiny. I thought, <laughs> I thought we lived in a really big house. But uh-huh. our house is tiny. And… um. I was amazed at the subway stations and subways, how clean it was, and um, all the convenience stores. Everything was really cool and amazing at first. Yeah. Mm. Why do you say at first? 
Oh, no, because you get used to it. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. But then okay. I, I thought, remember in the very beginning, I was like, oh. I remember, so when I grew up, we lived on this in this cul-de-sac and our house was on a hill. Uh-huh. And when I was growing up, I was like, this hill is so steep. It is so hard to… Like the driveway was like… It felt like… Uh, what is this? This is 90 degrees. So like a 45 degree incline. Uh huh. You had to walk up that every day. Yeah. And like going up into the garage from the car… It felt like a roller coaster every day. Oh so, but then I went back when I grew up and I was like… It's not that big of oh, a really? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean it's still a steep hill but I was like… It wasn't like a roller coaster. I remember as a kid, I was like, it's roller coaster time. Get ready. And I was like, actually, it's not that. (laughs) It's not that huge. Um, So so I know what you mean um, by that. So, but you got out here. Did you come out out here because of an audition? Yeah, because I got in and they wanted me to come, Mm. you know, and… And that was Cube? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you trained at Cube for how long? For one year. Did you know Peniel back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've known him since you first got here. Yeah, I've known him since like 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was that process like for you training? And then… Because you not only trained… But you ended up debuting at a different company. Mm-hmm. Like what happened there? Well, Q, first of all, I had a lot of fun there. Uh-huh. Because it was like a family. All the trainees, we were super close. Uh-huh. And I know a lot of other companies, they uh, separate the boys from the girls because uh-huh. they don't want anything to happen. But for us… What do you mean anything to happen? I mean, you know, for them to start dating. Oh, you know, Because there's, there's a lot of those things. And uh-huh. people eventually get cut from that. Uh-huh. But us, they always let us work together and train together, practice together. So we were all like a huge family. Um… We made really good memories. Uh, once a month, we went to community service oh, nice. all together uh, to this orphanage, and um, yeah, we it, it just felt like a like a big camp camping trip. I don't mm. know. It just felt I, I felt like I was um, on a camp with these people. But um, so yeah, it wasn't that much of a struggle. And then I was training, and then all of a sudden, I had a meeting with the CEO of Cube and mm. then CEO of Polaris. And um, the Polaris Entertainment Company person said, oh, we're going to debut a girl group really soon. And it's going to be kind of like a bad girl send image. So mm-hmm. we want you in that group. Mm-hmm. And the Cube CEO was like, honestly, you should go. Because I don't know when you'll be able to debut if you stay here. <laughs> and you know, you're getting a little older. So uh-huh. I think it's better for you if you debut ASAP. So uh-huh. he the, basically Polaris bought me from Cube. And then I moved… And then I debuted as Ladies Code. Man. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I guess if you stayed at Cube… the It was 4 Minute was big at the time. Yeah 4 Minute already debuted. The next right. group that debuted was CLC. And that was much later. Yeah and they were much younger than me. Right. And they debuted with a very like cute concept. So right. I don't know if I would have been, been in that. <laughs> I would I if I didn't go Hello, to Polaris. I'm Ashley. <laughs> I might have become like an English teacher or something <laughs> in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so good thing you you moved on to Polaris. Um, mm. So you guys debuted as Ladies Code uh, in 2013. So we debuted the same year. Actually. Really? Wait, you came out in We Dan Tanzing in 2013. So that was 2011. Oh. So I guess like Pangzong, like TV wise, uh-huh. in 2011. But my first. Solo album because uh-huh. I had like a group project 2012. But then like my first solo album was 2013. You were in a group? It was like literally after the show uh-huh. ended in like April of 2012. My mentor at the time, Isuan, he yeah. said, Okay, all the kids that were that I mentored, I'll put out a special single for you guys. Oh. As like a commemorative project mm-hmm. slash maybe it helps other kids get signed. Oh. And so we did that in the summer. Mm. And then I had already… I think I would already signed or something. And so then my solo project came out in January. Oh wow. And then you guys debuted in March. March. Okay. Yeah. So two months on venue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Means so much. <laughs> um, but it's funny that you said that it was a bad girl concept. Because I never thought of you guys as bad girls. But what do you mean? Our first debut song was bad girl. But it felt like I'm a bad girl but I'm not. Oh. Like, like little girls… Young girls who were trying to say I'm bad, but you're just like the <laughs> nicest girls ever. So I was like, I get it, but it almost felt cute uh-huh. in that sense. I was like, <laughs> didn't we look bad though? No, no? 
No. We didn't. We didn't look intimidating at Hold all. Hold on. Let me pull up. This Dude, one. look at my pictures and look at our music video. We all had such like smoky makeup. But like the colors in the video are like pink and they're bright. That The music video was a little more cutesy. We were kind of having fun and like pranking these guys. And it was supposed to be cute. But I think like our stage and… I mean I guess it like you're trying to play bad girl. But mm-hmm. I guess because I like… I knew you. Mm-hmm. Or I knew of you. And I knew of these hits. Mm-hmm. And like all… Like you guys are just too nice. So it's like… So it felt like… But you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought everyone thought we were really bad. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because I felt like I, I knew you guys yeah, a maybe. little bit. Um, but all to say like… Uh, so you guys did Bad Girl. And then you mm-hmm. did Yepo Yepo. Mm-hmm. That was like a 180 degree transformation. Maybe that's why too. Yeah maybe that's why. Because Yepo Yepo was… It kind of had more of an impact. Maybe yeah. that's why. And it was a very like funky retro… Come on, baby. Yeah. yeah. But you guys did a lot. You guys got a lot of awards that year too, right? We got the Rookie Award right. award with BTS. Yeah. That yeah, was Ladies Code and BTS Man. that year. You guys were everywhere. I remember. We were? I, from what I… Maybe I just like really liked you guys. Oh, thank you. I just remember… Because in the company like, oh we got to do… More of this. Gotta do more of that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with trends… They're always trying to follow somebody. Everybody's always trying to follow yeah. somebody. Mm-hmm. And I think if you guys were somewhat influenced by 21… Mm-hmm. In terms of some of the music… Other people were looking to you as soon as you guys started putting out Yepo Yepo. Oh. Wow. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know either. That's just my non-industry expertise. Yeah. Eric here, and this week's episode of the K-Pop Tebok Show is brought to you in part by BetterHelp. Better H-E-L-P. Yep, that's BetterHelp.com. So, what does BetterHelp do? Well, if you guys have heard me talk about it, they provide online counseling from wherever you are. It could be at home, it could be on the road, just wherever you have internet, you can get counseling. And I love that about BetterHelp.com. I personally really love that BetterHelp provides us with an opportunity to get counseling and help from home, wherever we are. Uh, It's exactly what we need because we don't need to go visit people in person, right? So it's very convenient and you guys can get matched with a counselor who is well versed in whatever area it is you need to talk about or whatever area you need help with, okay? Uh, So you guys can go check it out at BetterHelp.com. Calm. It's the affordable alternative to offline counseling. And if you need financial aid, they provide it as well. So whatever you need, be sure to get the help that you need. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener of K-Pop Tebak, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash K-Pop. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash K-Pop. Now, back to our show. But anyways, what was it like being in part a part of Ladies Code? And and do you still consider yourself like are you guys still under Ladies Code or like how does how does that work out? I don't know because we haven't like technically disbanded yet. Mm-hmm. Um so I do it's not like Ladies Code is completely out of the picture right. and I think So Jung and Juni and we still like have a lot of love for Ladies Code and affection. So yeah, it's not like it we're I don't know, there are possibilities of maybe doing a in comeback the future, in yeah. the future, like way, way later. Uh, but Ladies Code being in Ladies Code, uh, I just feel so blessed having been a part of that for seven years. Cause I honestly think the girls of Ladies Code, I we were I mean, they were all like really nice. Mm-hmm. And even though I was the leader, I heard a lot of stories about other girl groups and how, <laughs> you know, how much problems they were having and you know, just they were they bumped heads a lot, but yeah. we really got along, I think, and they were really kind and thoughtful and selfless. So yeah, they made the um, time go by really fast, and they made the whole experience very pleasant. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Um, was there a particular promotion or a song that you really particularly loved? I liked. Um, Bad Girl and Pretty Pretty in the very yeah. beginning. The first year, 2013. Yeah. I think that's when we had the most fun. And of course, it was 
our first ever promotion and debut. So we were very excited about it, even mm-hmm. though we were very tired. Mm-hmm. And we were very grateful for all the experience. Um, I can speak for all of us when we say that we hate it so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, okay, we liked the song, but that time of promotions was like, oh my god. Why? We were so miserable. Oh no. About Because of the song or like other situation? Like what was the deal? I don't know why, but I think maybe from all the pretty, pretty promotions, we were kind of in a… Like we exhausted. were kind of in a slump and yeah. s- exhausted. And then having come back with um, So Wonderful. And then we were just kind of like, oh… I don't know if I want to do this anymore. In, your, like in, in like <laughs> within your first year of debuting. <laughs> yeah. And there was… I don't know. There was a lot of um, pressure from the company too. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. That sucks. Oh. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, so, I mean, so, so wonderful. I mean it's a good song but looking… <laughs> oh you know the song. I, I'm telling you. I listened to all of your stuff. Oh. Because I… I think I I have moment I have like I'll have like a day random day mm-hmm. where I'll just go back and listen to all of Lady Scott's songs. Really? Like throughout the day. Oh my god. Because for me it was I thought you guys were incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. You guys had overall like you know groups have hits and they have misses, but mm-hmm. I felt like you guys were always leaning on the hit side, and like especially like vocal color wise too. Mm-hmm. Like So Jung like is so like. Stands out in her own way. Yeah. But then there's a way that all of you guys were always cohesive together as a unit. Yeah. Human. We all had such different voices yeah. and colors. But somehow it just worked. Right. I think. Yeah. And so I think that's why I was such a big fan and like wanted to cheer you guys on. Mm. Without me even realizing it. Like I'm realizing it like as I'm having this conversation with mm. you. But yeah. Sucks that you didn't like that promotion. <laughs> what can None you do? of us did. What can you do? Yeah. That's just kind of what it is. But obviously there is also a very tragic incident mm-hmm. within the history of Ladies Code as well. And I don't know. Is it weird to talk about at all to you? Or No it's not weird to talk about it. But when I do get into details kind of… Yeah. I um, still feel kind of… Like emotionally yeah. unstable. So I don't know. I feel like no matter how much like how much time passes. I mm. feel like it'll always be. Um, I mean it won't be the easiest to talk about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Because I you know I remember. I can't even imagine what it was like for you and the girls. Because as a fan and everything. And, and I think we had a lot of like promotions that kind of overlapped. Yeah. And, like, didn't you do something with Lisa? I don't I feel like I probably did. Well, we were both on Witan. Yeah. Right? We were different seasons. But just through that, like, mm-hmm. there's always, like, kind of a connection. Yeah. And then I think my managers and your managers, like, kind of knew each other. Mm-hmm. Or, like, we always saw each other at, like, Bangsonggook or mm-hmm. whatever. And then So Jung and I, we were on the same radio program right. for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so I just felt like there was always some sort of connection there. Mm-hmm. Um, so for people who are listening who don't know what we're referring to. So Ladies Code, the, you guys were in a very tragic car accident in September of 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, and two members uh, passed. And I just remember me being incredibly shocked and like not knowing how to react or in any way. Um, and all I… I guess it's hard for me to even discuss… Um, but I guess just moving beyond that, like you personally, you know, you guys took some time off. How did you process that? And I feel like that's such a big question. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I'm sure you'll probably process now and for the rest of your life as well. What was it like for you trying to come out of that and recover from that? I, I think when it first happened, I thought ladies code would be the end. Like mm-hmm. I thought they weren't there wasn't going to be any more ladies code and me personally it was probably the mm, the most shocking thing or like the most painful experience that I ever went through so I thought that it was right for me to just stop mm. doing this at all I yeah. I just wanted to quit and go back home and mm-hmm. be with my family and um I didn't know if I had the strength to like continue and I didn't know if I had the I didn't know if I had the willpower even back then. So we 
we were on a hiatus for a very long time after that because we didn't know what we're, what we would do and what we were going to do with Ladies Code. And we just continued to kind of just go to practice, get mm-hmm. lessons here and there. Um, it was a dark time for all of us, yeah. I think. We had a lot of trauma and we just didn't know what to do. We were scared of going outside and et cetera. Um, but I think eventually the three of us came to terms that, you know, Lisa and Umbi really wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. And it's it's right for us to continue mm-hmm. so that people don't forget them and people don't um, forget their names. So... Yeah, we just kind of decided to be strong and come together and start um, getting ready for Ladies Code preparations again and promotions again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine in in trying to put together an album um, between the three of you. Musically, it's going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, it's also completely different. How… How was that process? Was How difficult was it to kind of put together a, now a trio um, and come back? You know, given, you know, you're, you guys are pushing forward, just wanting to do it partially for your members as well, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I think it was hard because Ladies Code was kind of known for like the funky retro concepts. Yeah. Um, so we… Didn't know what we would do as the three of us. But mm-hmm. still kind of keep like the ladies code color. Mm-hmm. But after a long time, I think our uh, company and we just decided that we were going to change everything up completely. Uh-huh. And that's how we came back with Galaxy. Which was mm-hmm. a, a lot more um, dark and calm compared to our songs before that. Right. Um, so starting then, we I think the company tried to focus more on like music and… Um, like the music quality mm-hmm. rather than like, you know, like quote unquote idols and performance. And that's how we came back as a trio with mm-hmm. Galaxy. Did you, I mean, you had trained for so long um, and choreography and kind of that idol thing was probably like a big part of who you were. Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless of the color of the music you were putting out. So moving from that of being more of performance idol to more of a vocal musical kind of group. How did you accept that? Because I think for me like you know I've I've always wanted to go back and forth freely uh, in terms of what I want to do in terms of the season mm. um, of whatever music I'm in. Does, is there a certain style or music that fits you better that you personally gravitate towards more? In with Within Ladies Code songs? Yeah within Ladies Code, code songs like you know, if you started doing performance and that's what you really wanted to do, were you okay going to the more musical side? And then I guess moving beyond that, in terms of music, what kind of music are you most attracted to and that do you really love? Mm. Uh, there was just a lot of pressure at first because now we just had the three of us and we had to make the song sound good mm. and we had to make the stage look good with less people. So, I mean, I besides the pressure, I thought it was good for us to kind of show our more mature side Mm. now that we were a little older and we were um, more into our career in terms of how many years it's been. Um, And with music, I personally like the Galaxy and the Rain style because I always have loved R&B and Mm. like slower paced songs. So I didn't have any trouble with that and I enjoyed the promotions a lot actually. But Music, I like everything. Mm. It, when it comes to dancing, of course, like Bad Girl and Kiss Kiss were always really fun. Um, and Yepo Yepo too. But with singing, uh, yeah, Galaxy Under Rain, I guess it's more my style. Okay. Yeah. I like how you left out so wonderful, but… <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, we, we know why. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I try not to think about it. <laughs> In terms of, you know… Coming back from that, you know, how did you how did you cope? Like, I, I think for a lot of people, it's unimaginable pain and and loss and stuff. But it's hard for people to bounce back from that. I think the strength that you guys had as a unit and individually, even you know, seeing what you guys are doing now, mm-hmm. it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of strength. What was it that kind of kept you going and picked you back up? Um, was there a good ecosystem or people you spoke to or 
certain things that you walked yourself through in, in getting back on your feet? I think in the very beginning, um, it was hard because I didn't have a lot of friends back then. Mm-hmm. Like in within the community, I mm-hmm. didn't have a lot of friends to rely on or talk to because we didn't have any freedom back then. So of right. course, I couldn't make any friends. Like we didn't even have our cell phones and stuff. Right. Uh, during that time, I decided to uh, go out and meet people a little more because mm-hmm. if I was staying home all day, like I couldn't stop thinking about it. And mm-hmm. I was just crying every day. So I started to reach out to friends. And actually, I uh, attended church every week. Mm-hmm. And then there I met Rosie, like Rosie from Blackpink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just randomly sitting next to each other. We happened to sit next to each other by chance. And there was a time before the sermon when the pastor was like, oh, like it's a time of, you know, fellowship, talk to the person next to you. So we started talking and of course, at first she lied to me. She was like, oh, I'm here studying guitar from <laughs> from Australia. And me too. Like, I didn't think she would know who I was. So I was like, oh, I'm just here like teaching English. Uh-huh. And then, but then like we hit it off and we, um, our conversation flowed very like smoothly. So uh-huh. after church service, you're we like, hey, you want to go get like jajangmyeon? And she uh-huh. was like, yeah. And then that's when we um, started talking and got honest. And um, <laughs> she told me she didn't have any friends in Korea. Uh-huh. I told her I don't really have any friends. So um, we started like getting really close and hanging out every weekend. And uh, me, for me, meeting her at that time was um, was really big, and it was a huge support because I didn't have anyone to talk to about mm. stuff like that. And she was also from another country right. um, and came here to train and was preparing to debut. I was also from another country, so we had a lot to uh, talk to each other about, and we related to each other. Mm. So it was like that and then you know reaching out a little more and then like meeting other friends it slowly got better um so i think having that group of people around me having friends that um you know supported me and loved me i think that really helped Um, and our company also sent us to um, therapy Mm. so that i feel like helped me a lot um so jung and juni had it way worse though so Mm. um so Jung, I mean, she got hurt a lot from the accident. So mm-hmm. even physically, she had to go back and forth to the hospital for a long time to get treatment. Mm-hmm. And Juni, um, I think because she was younger, the level of trauma like just was so much uh-huh. bigger for her yeah. or harder for her. So um, she had really bad insomnia. And yeah, she said every time she closed her eyes, like all she could see is that image from the car accident. And mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I can't imagine what they went through. But um, yeah, I think with time and uh, the support system, we slowly healed mm-hmm. and got better. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No, thank you for, for sharing that. I mean, it's not definitely not easy discussing this stuff. And mm-hmm. and if it's too personal, I, I, I apologize. No, no, no. Um, but I, I think it's something that a lot of people deal with. Mm-hmm. They just don't know how to… I don't know how to deal with it or how to discuss it. Mm. How to talk about it. Yeah. And I think it's knowing this and hearing this allows people who ha- have been in, you know, a traumatic situation to maybe find light in, in getting back up on their feet. Mm-hmm. And for those of us who haven't been but have people around us that are knowing how to be a better support system or a better friend mm-hmm. or… Because I think part of it, even for me, like when I hear of other people who go through things, it's like I want to be there but I just don't know how like mm. how to help or how to understand or how to process mm. and so um, for people who are listening in our audience I hope that in a way through through your sharing of this kind of stuff it's a way for people to kind of learn and understand yeah and I actually wanted to talk about this earlier like when we came back mm-hmm. as a trio um, I wanted to talk about what we went through mm-hmm. and how we dealt with it because I thought that there might be people who were going through the same thing mm-hmm. who could kind of relate to and hopefully we can help. But I understand from the company side of side because they didn't want people to associate with right. us with the accident and kind of like pity us. Right. But at the same time, I was like, but that's a huge part of what makes us us now, right? Yeah. So I felt like it was important to talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's it's just tough. I mean mm-hmm. I understand. I mean, I, I'm sure you do too. I mean, more than anyone, you understand both sides of the perspective there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but also just as I'm speaking to you, I just remember how management was very, very hands-on with you guys. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, before the accident. Mm-hmm. They were very, very hands-on. Yeah. <laughs> and so hearing this, I was like, oh right. They were very managed mm-hmm. in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of… I know you mentioned that Rosie mm-hmm. was you, like a great friend and you guys got through a lot of stuff together. I actually ran into her the other day. At a, at, at, at like an event. and mm-hmm. But like everybody has their masks on, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be like, hi. But then I was like, no, this is going to be weird. So I just like shut up and I was like, okay, bye. Why? <laughs> She's so friendly. You should have well, said hi. I, I, mean, I don't know. I was too intimidated. Oh, and And no. like also there were a lot of celebrities around. And, uh-huh. I, and like I was like, I feel like I'm an imposter. Am I, am I, <laughs> am I allowed to be here? <laughs> like I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. It was just like a lot of actors and singers mm-hmm. and like it felt like a who's who mm-hmm. of certain group of people. But I was like, why am I here? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> and Diane went with me too. And I was like, and we left. It's like, okay, that was fun role playing celebrity. I'm glad we're done. And <laughs> Diane was like, I'm going home. Bye. <laughs> Dude. Do you know? Do you know how much you know the Korean general public likes you? I, okay, but that like I don't know. I feel like I'm so removed from that right now. Like I feel like all I do is I sit in this room and I mm-hmm. podcast. No, but you will forever be like the Eric Na. I don't know. Well, yeah. thank you, but I don't know. But we'll see. But it was just I was like, oh my god, it's a, I was like, Dan, that's a celebrity. Dan, that's an actor. <laughs> and I was like, that was. That was Rose. <laughs> you should have said hi. I don't know. Maybe next time if we happen to naturally run into each other. Okay. You could be like… This is this person named Eric. Yeah. Is no I'm knows? sure she knows who you are. Um, but she would have been like… Oh my god hi. I don't know. It was… Well everybody has their masks on right? Mm-hmm. And we were coming down the stairs. Mm. And there were like other people that I already know. Where mm-hmm. I'd be like… Hyung, Luna, 안녕하세요. And they're like… Who are you? I was like… It's Eric. They're like… Oh! <laughs> 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 but she walked in and she looked like very like like kind of like frazzled. Like I just want to get up stairs and like kind of Rosie? look around. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. So I didn't want to be like… Was she by herself? I mean, she was with uh, somebody else. But then Rosie just kind of kept looking at the ground. And I was like, okay, I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she seems wonderful. No, she um, is. But anyways. So now you're, you're a free… You're a free woman. Mm-hmm. You're a free person. I am. Your contract ended in February and you have been free now. What mm-hmm. has it been like to kind of uh, do things on your own mm-hmm. and making that decision to, I guess, A, stay in Korea and B, continue to do what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of hosting and, you know, online digital content kind of stuff. But it's it's all of that may seem natural to some people, but it's also a very intentional decision, I believe, by people who are actually doing it. Mm-hmm. What was the decision process behind that? In well, I always wanted to make my own decisions when it came to work because you know you have a lot of um, limitations and rules and stuff like that. So um, once I got out of the contract, I was—I mean, I'm still am really happy. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> of course, there are difficulties when it comes to like. Uh, doing all the things that the company originally did for me. Right. Which was like scheduling, getting gigs and um, you know, uh, driving me everywhere and stuff like that. But I think it's pretty manageable. And I'm not like… I don't know. I kind of consider myself like a… Um, what is it called? Yeonbanin? Have you heard that? Like half young, yeah, half, half normal, normal person. person yeah. Like half celeb, half normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like… I mean… It's not like I'm like a top star or celebrity that needs like a manager or anything. Uh-huh. So I'm enjoying it and I feel more like an adult making my own decisions. So uh-huh. it's been enjoyable. Yeah. What is what are some of you know, what's like the biggest pleasure and what's the biggest pain in doing this? I I have a lot of because I've been doing a lot of stuff on my own recently and mm-hmm. I'm like <gasps> This is so annoying. But it's because you're so busy and you have I mean, so much schedule. I mean maybe. But I don't… I, I'm just like… Gosh. So what for you? What, uh-huh. is, what is it? Is there you know the best part and then like… One thing that you wish that your company still did for you. Or one thing that you're like… God I didn't realize I could do this. But… The best part is 
getting all the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amen. Yes. yes. Um, not having to share the money uh-huh. and directly getting all of that because I never, you know, got paid before. Right. Um, and the hardest part, I guess, is if you don't have a manager and if you don't have someone to kind of go to different broadcasts or different pitch you um, yeah to pitch me it's kind of hard right. i would have to wait for people to kind of reach out to me mm-hmm. cuz i don't have any like connections to be like oh like yeah. oh like use me or like yeah, oh yeah, like yeah, yeah i want to be on so yeah it's just like the waiting game okay but at the same time um i guess i'm more focused on like radio and podcasts and youtube content like you said and i'm not really too focused on like the korean broadcast right mm-hmm. now so i'm i'm good Okay. Yeah. You mentioned just in passing that you never got paid. Mm-hmm. In late, you never got paid once? We got allowance. Oh. Um, 50만원 a month. And then Man. after like 30만원, it, got, it decreased to 30만원 a month. <sighs> That's tough. That's tough. Well, I'm glad you're making money now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're making money now. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you're, you're doing what you do. And um, it's… I'm glad you're happy. Yeah. I'm like happy. you seem happy. I like, know. And I, everyone tells me I look happier. You look like happy. Even my former company people, uh-huh. they they see me. Like like they saw me recently. They're like, wow, you look so much happier. I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay. I guess… No, it's good. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm so happy for you. When it comes to… Let's talk about the podcast real quick. Um, if you guys are sleeping under a rock and you have not listened or watched Get Real. Mm-hmm. Hosted by… Ashley, BM, and Peniel. How is it doing that show right now? It's so much fun. Yeah. Because, you know, BM and Peniel and I are friends. So yeah. it's kind of like us three drinking coffee and having conversations about specific topic right. every week, of course. But right. yeah, it's fun. Is there is there a topic that you are really hoping to do in the near future or that you've had a favorite one so far? Uh, I think the girl talk with Joan. Just because I had another girl with me uh-huh. to kind of be on my side. Because uh-huh. it's always two against one. Right. Um, I like talking about cheating because I got to spill a lot of tea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your cheating boyfriend. Yeah. Ex. That was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like doing all that stuff. Like spilling the tea. Uh-huh. But, yeah. All right. Well, I gotta be careful uh, not well, to spill too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep uh, looking forward to it. If you guys haven't checked it out, be sure to check it out. It's been a, uh, it's been a lot of fun to listen to. How do you feel like the difference between radio and podcast? Obviously, you've done radio for a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you could curse on podcast. <laughs> um, you could pretty much say anything you want. You could say brand names, um, and it's not live, so yeah. we can like edit out the parts that you don't. That you're like, wait, we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, wait, we shouldn't say that. But radio is more formal. Um, you know, there are more rules, yeah. and it's live, so there's a bit more like kinjangam, like anticipation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the radio, it's yeah. a little more on your toes. Mm-hmm. So we actually have some questions that fans texted. And if you guys ever want to text us at Dive Studios, you can do it at 310-564-1030 for US and Canada. Or you just follow us on our socials because we're everywhere. Um, this is from Frank in New York. What's a fun Christmas, Christmas tradition Christmas. you have that you're looking forward to this year? Uh, I feel like Christmas is going to be really different this year yeah. because of Corona. But… Um, I mean, I don't really do anything too special in Korea because when I was in New York, we had like a yearly tradition of going to um, church at, mm-hmm. at, on Christmas Eve and mm-hmm. then doing the candle lighting thing and then um, spending Christmas together. But uh, in Korea, I've been doing white elephant with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Just going over at Joan's house and just sharing our gifts. That's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. And drinking. Well, you barely drink. <laughs> I know, but… I like having like three glasses of wine. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is from Kimmy in Richmond, Indiana. Uh, how do you deal with homesickness? And I love listening to Get Real. And I look forward to every episode that comes out. Keep being your amazing selves. So yeah. How do you deal with homesickness? Do you, do you get homesick these days? Yeah. yeah. Especially these days. Because it's been about a year since I last visited New York. Yeah. So… Um, and during like the holiday season, I right. think I do get homesick a lot. I mean, what can you do? All you can do is just FaceTime your family and yeah. your friends and look back at pictures and just try to be with them like through FaceTime. Yeah. Uh, there's not much you could do. So your parents and your family, they all mm-hmm. live in New York? Mm-hmm. Okay. You have a, one brother? Yeah. 
So it's three of them. They're all in, yeah. in the States. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's probably been a while since you saw them. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, if I'm craving like specific um, food from New York. Well, the food that I enjoyed in New York, I'll have that. So it kind of helps with my homesickness. Like what? Like recently I had garlic knots. Because <sighs> oh, I really missed the New York garlic knots. Yeah. And you posted on your story. And yeah. I was like, I need to get this. I mean, it wasn't as good. No? No. God. Unfortunately. And like really good bagels. Um, yeah. I try to get it. But I mean, it's not the same. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, mm. but I feel like Korea's got, gotten a lot better. Yeah, with a food. lot better. Like, remember when you first got here? Like, for me, what I think when I first got here, I was like, oh my god, Western food here sucks. Yeah, but now it's really good. And the only bagels they had were from like the coffee shops that were really soggy. Oh, uh, and they and wouldn't really even stale. toast it. Yeah, it tasted really bad. Yeah, and you're like, this is like cardboard. Mm. But now I prefer um, Korean food than. I, like I prefer food in Korea than food in the States. Me too. Recently I went back. I couldn't so eat anything because it was so salty and so greasy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Eddie, Eddie, my brother was like, I feel like you've just become very Korean in your yeah, taste. Yeah, me and too. I was like, really? Like, I, like there's… Have you been to Maremma? Like the Italian pasta spot? No, I didn't. So there's like a couple places that I absolutely swear by. I'm like, this place is so good. Mm-hmm. And Eddie's like, you're just Korean. I was like… He no. didn't like it. He's like, it's good, but it's oh. like not amazing. It's not like the best pasta. It's like mm, this is the best pasta in the world. He's like, let's fight. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like that too. Because uh, my brother took me to like a really fancy like steak and lobster place in the city when I went back last time, and I felt so bad. But I had like three bites, and I felt like barfing literally. <laughs> so I was like, I can't eat anymore, and I just my brother ate everything. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's something's different. It's we've just been here too long. Yeah. Not not in a bad way. We've just our tastes have changed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is it's just really is your brother younger or older? Oh, younger. How old is your brother? He's he just turned twenty five. So I mean, he's, he's gonna turn twenty five. Yeah. Okay, so he's he's young, young. So he's not what ninety five. Cool. Mm. That's not even that young anymore. Stop it. <sighs> I'm just old. <laughs> um. All right. Next question. Last question that we have for you. This is from. Jackie in Toronto. Been following you for a while. I love your style and how unique it is. Where do you get your style inspiration? And do you have any favorite brands or stores that you shop at? I feel like there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, I get my inspiration from Instagram a lot. Because there are so many people who dress well. And um, you know, who's got great sense of style on Instagram. So I use my explore feed. And I get inspired by my friends. Because I also have friends who are like influencers slash yeah. YouTubers. Who have really great style. Um, so they inspire me a lot. And shopping, I pretty much shop everywhere. Like vintage and also Korean stores and international like online stores. It's more about like how nice I think it'll look on me or how um, pretty the piece is rather mm-hmm. than like which brand. So right. I pretty much shop from everywhere. Okay. Mm. Cool. Um, well, that's about all we have for these questions. What we do have now is we have a speed quiz. Speed quiz? Yeah. Where like you have what? to answer as many questions as you possibly oh, can. Okay. But we're on the same team. Oh. Wait. And we're playing against other people in the past. So like Jesse and Nikun and I think I don't even Chonga. So we're trying to answer questions together. Okay. To like what kind of record. questions? Like trivia questions? Yes. Like like what we did on Whiting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You were you I were suck. I actually also hated Whiting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I mean, uh, it was tough. Oh my thing was hard. It was. My thing was a lot. No, it's because we tried to get all eight episodes in, in one, one day. day dude. That's what killed us. But that oh was literally gosh. the only day we had for everybody. <gasps> Trivia questions? Oh god. But okay. you're gonna be fine. Good luck, Eric. Uh, 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 okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So three minutes on the clock. Yep. Diane will be reading us questions. We can do this. Fighting. Fighting. All right, let's mm. go. What does E represent and E equals MC squared? Equilibrium. Energy. <laughs> Energy. <laughs> <laughs> Which organ has four chambers? Heart. In Sailor Moon, what is the name of the love interest, Darian's alter ego? Who's Darian? Tuxedo Mask? Mm-hmm. What? What was Superman's birth name? Car- Clark. Kent. Kent Clark. Clark Kent. Clark Kent. Kent. Birth name. Man of Super. Clarius. No. Clarendus. Kryptonite. 
Clay? He's Klein. not of Earth, so. Okay, move on oh. next. Pass. <laughs> okay. Pass. Uh, what USA Network TV show did Meghan Markle appear in for seven seasons? Suits. Correct. How do I know that? I don't in know. In what country did the Christmas song Silent Night originate? Denmark. Germany. Switzerland. Austria. Poland. Austria. 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 Yes. By area, which American state is the largest? Texas? California? Alaska? Alaska. Ooh, nice guess. What day of the year is considered National Pie Day? March 14. Also my mom's birthday. Which country is Aesop's fables believed to originate in? What? Greece. What the f- oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> How many hearts does an octopus have? One. Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in which board game do you try to solve a murder? Clue. Clue. We're killing this. What's the num- top number of a fraction called? The denominator. The denominator. The denominator. The denominator. The the whole number. The fraction. What's the, the top, top number, number of a fraction called? The equilibrium. I don't know. <laughs> what? Pass? I forgot. It's the numerator, by the way. Oh, oh, how many people make up the U.S. Electoral College? I don't know. 340. 378. 450. 478. Think, do the, think about it. If you this. need 270 to win the majority. 270. 418. So oh, wait, what? 539. Do you just add it? 540. Double? 539. 540? 538. 538. Right, 538. <laughs> I had the 38 right. Which is the only U.S. state to grow coffee beans? Hawaii. Oh. Correct. What was the number of Twitter's original character limit? 140. 99. Oh, 140. Oh. 140. <laughs> <laughs> what year did High School Musical come out? 2006. 2006? Yeah. Wow. Oh, what? what was the scientist to propose the three laws of motion? Newton. Oh, I hated physics. Yes. How many elements are there in the periodic table? 52. 56. Oh, Eric. 70. 55. 54. 7. 53. 59. 60. 49. 49. And we're up. It was 118. <laughs> you got that wrong. <laughs> And with we that, so that was speed off. quiz. How many did we get right? We got a lot right. We got a lot. We got a lot. Do we win? Are we I number one well, so this, far? Wait, tell them, Tell us how many we got. We got it. We got to know. Wow, that was. We got a lot. We definitely got like twenty. What? Was, what is your major in again? International studies. Oh, okay. We we definitely did. We did definitely you get did. The Hawaii one? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. That's it? Yeah. No, we definitely got more. How, were there people who got more? We got like 20 with Nikun. <gasps> He's smart. Huh? We did? We definitely got more than 13. How many questions did we do? I think you guys did probably like 18 That's or it? something. Yeah. That felt like a lot more. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Diane, I, you're not strength in math. I don't know. Might clearly. be the equilibrium. <laughs> that threw me off. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, that was it. That what was, was the that game. for? Just to prove how dumb I am? Just to, <laughs> what was that for? Just for fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> just for fun. Mm. Ashley, is there anything you want to do? Is there anything you want to discuss? Anything you want to ask? Anything? Anything on the Ted Box show? Uh, to you? Or, or in general. There can be nothing. We can just say bye. Okay. I think it'll be fun if we learn a TikTok dance together. I think that's a horrible idea. No, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> you <laughs> did it for Nuna Nana. You could do it. That took You're me like good. three weeks. No. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'm a good teacher. I'll let you get it down in 10 minutes. <sighs> okay. Because Ashley's the main dancer. So, but like, what are you thinking? What dance? I don't know. Whatever's trending on TikTok. <gasps> Crap. I don't I don't have the TikTok God, downloader right now. TikTok. <laughs> do you have the TikTok app on your phone? I, I do, but to learn the, 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 the What? Oh, the say so, the cute one? Oh, Savage even... Love was isn't it easy? I don't even know. Okay. I don't, I don't You'll be fine. I don't trust it. Savage, I don't trust it. It'll be fine. All right. Well, if you guys want to check out this humiliation, you can look at it on Patreon. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. What what can we look for f- from you? Like, what do you have coming up? Anything that you want us to look out for? Anything you want our listeners to go do, see, what, anything? 
Uh, my YouTube channel is at Ashley B. Choi. And uh, I do live radio show every single day from 8 to 10 p.m. KST on Arirang Radio. Mm-hmm. And we have a visual radio. So if you guys follow Arirang Radio's YouTube channel, you guys can watch that to uh, enjoy the visual radio and have more fun with it. Um, yeah, and I'll be continuing to host Get Real with Peniel and Matthew. Yay. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ashley, for coming on this show. Mm. Um, I'm sorry it took so long for us to get you on. No, it's okay. Did we talk about everything? I think so. Is there anything else you want to talk about? What are you listening to these days? See? <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, if you ever want to come back, mm-hmm. you're more than welcome. Okay. And you can even you can host the show for me if you want. Okay. Just take it Sounds over good. for like for however long. You okay. can do whatever you want. Okay. You're part of the dive family. You can do whatever you want. Thank you. Anyways, um, if you guys can please do check out Ashley's YouTube and all of her stuff that she's been working hard at. Uh, if you want to see this TikTok dance challenge, go to patreon.com slash dive studios. And you guys can connect with us on all the socials at the Dive Studios or to Hip Hop Show. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Give us five stars from wherever you're listening to. Right? Mm-hmm. And as a last thing, we have to hear Ashley sing. So if you could improvise an outro jingle for us, we would appreciate it. Well, how does the original outro jingle There is go? no outro jingle. That's why we make people in- to improvise it. Oh. They do that every time? Mm-hmm. Wow. I had no idea. <laughs> Just, you know, anything. Okay. Just no pressure. I know what the I know what yours originally sounds like. Yeah, but you don't have to do that. Okay. It can be something. Can you harmonize me? Yeah, let me know what it is. Um <laughs> This was K pop Deva with Eric Nam and Ashley. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. Okay, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Thank you, Ashley. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week on the K-Pop Devox Show. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications for this channel. And comment if you can. And uh, before you go, there's so much more content. Look at this. Amazing content for you guys to check out. Do it now. Please? Okay, bye. Go. Bye.